you should always wear safety <laughs> safety glasses. Welcome. This is uh, video three. What this is, DJ, is this is basically like if you were doing a full blown remodeling job and you would have torn down the cabinets and you were taking the cabinets out and you would have the availability to have open stud pockets like this before the sheetrock was hung. Then what would what normally would have happened is the wall would have been built. Then the cabinets would have been pushed against the back of the wall. Sheetrock would have been applied on this side, but we're, we didn't put any sheetrock there so we could show you exactly how it, how it lines up and how it works out. Then the cabinet would be fastened to the wall. Then on this side, where you're going to want your raised bar, we're going to show you how to do it with, with you. It, when you have open framing like this, and then we're going to show you how to do it if, the, if you don't have open framing and the sheetrock's covering the wall and you can't get to the back of the wall. You're going to want to be able to put it however you want to lay it out on, on the wall. Either, like I said, you, you're going to want it on the close to the edge. You want to install it properly. Yeah, you want to turn it the right way too. That, that always helps. <laughs> you're going to either want to put it on the edge or you might want to put it here or anywhere. What the problem with that is, is that when there's just drywall covering over top of it, that unless the bracket is directly over top of a stud, that you're going to run into problems with the bracket wanting to be able to flex the drywall like that. That's something that can't happen. It'll snap and the granite will want to fall off. So to take care of that, like I said, if you've got the, the already the open studs, what you're going to do is you're going to want a block. The blocks are going to fit in like this. We're going to nail them in place with 16 penny nails through the side and through the top. What this does now is when you install the sheetrock over top, it gives you a solid place to be able to screw the screws into the bracket. This also allows you to be able to put the brackets anywhere you want to in the wall. They don't have to go over the studs. So what's going to happen here is now we're going to come in and we're going we're to place these blocks and nail them in. I'll show you how we'll do, do one right here. So is it important that you block in every section? Well, you want, what, what this gives you the ability to do is if it's blocked all the way across, then your layout of the brackets can be anywhere on this wall. Okay. If you only blocked it, say, here and down on the ends, then you're, oh, you're going to be limited just to where your blocks are. I got it. Yep. So that's why we would come in and we were blocking every section. And like I said, you take, you put the block in, you take 16 penny nails. You drive the 16 penny nail in the block like that. Either two two nails is sufficient, three is three is plenty. Oh! <laughs> Just kidding. You have the ability to nail through this side. And the trick is you come down from underneath and you angle it like this. It's also not, it's important to try to make sure that the blocks are flush with the studs. The blocks push back like this, what happens is it leaves a little pocket, collapse the sheetrock when you're screwing the bracket in. So now that the blocks pull back behind, I've driven a nail here, I come in pull with the hammer, I can flush the block out and then drive this nail in. And he drives it home. That pretty and much recycle. That pretty much kept us flush here for hanging the sheetrock over top of. Trip just did it old school with the hammer and nail. Put 16 penny nails, did it across like I showed on the first block. Now you can see how we have it blocked all the way across. These are on 16 inch centers. The studs are 16 on the center, which would be a typical way a house is built, a way a house is framed. On this one, we have attached the wall to the cabinets and to the floor. Okay. That keeps the wall from being able to tip over. In the normal construction, the cabinets would already be attached to the wall from the back side in typical construction. Sheet rockers? They're coming to sheet rockers. They look just like the granite guys. For the purposes of the video, it's going to be an unfinished piece and the pieces of wood are going to be unfinished. Normally you would have this would already be painted in a finished product before you would actually install the brackets. The drywall in installer 
when they were doing the sheetrock, would put a metal corner bead. Okay, so you get a metal corner bead, you can get that, that at the hardware store? Yeah, that would come, like, we just don't have the luxury to do that in the video because we'd have to put the corner bead on, mud it in, and all that would have to dry. Yeah. So what we're doing now, just to show you about the brackets on the sheetrock, is just putting the sheet like it's hung. It's just not finished yet. Got it. Put that in. Where would you? How often would you screw it? Uh, well, if it was going to be actually put in, then you would screw it every 12 inches. Is what they, what they require. Up and down each stud too. Uh, up and down each stud. So you would put one at the top and one in the bottom. We'll decide how far off the end we want to be, and then we're going to split the differences up, doing the 30 inch span again. Even with the blocking back behind it, if you attach the brackets onto the sheetrock just the sheetrock only and you screw them in, the pressure of screwing the bracket in and the weight of the granite going down can make an impression into the, into the drywall. To prevent that from happening, we've made these little brackets to go back behind the countertop. They're going to have a nice bead on them. We're actually putting them online. We're, we're working on them right now. This is just something this... we made for, for the video to show you how to do it. The problem is, is that you don't want to put the, the bracket directly onto the sheetrock. You can put the bracket directly onto the sheetrock, but you risk the the, uh, the possibility of when you tighten the bracket of it, it actually making an indention into the sheetrock. So to keep that from happening, that's what we use these brackets for. So these will nail on like this, and then this bracket will mount over top of this bracket like that. Once again, for the video, none of this is painted. Normally, this wall would be painted and these brackets would be painted. You don't want to have to put the bracket in, put it on, and then have to paint around the bracket. It's much easier for it to be pre-painted ahead of time and then the bracket to, to, to go on there. All this, the sheetrock and these brackets could be put on when you were trimming the house or you know, doing, setting the cabinets and that kind of stuff and finishing the drywall, and then the brackets could go on after that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lay it out as to where we want want these and then we're going to install the brackets. So what do you want to do DJ? You want to come how far off the end? We got four yeah. of them so I think we should come in you know about right in there. You want to say five inches off the end? Yeah. You, you can also, what, what other kind of facades can you have? What kind of fronts can you have? Oh, board you if can it use? wasn't drywall that could be beaded board, it could be whatever you want it to be as, as long, long as this surface, like I said, as long as you put the solid blocking back behind it, it could be any other, it could be paneling, beaded board. So if you board, had paneling, it would be the you same wouldn't thing. necessarily need to have these, these bracket If it was wood, you? you would not have to have the brackets, you're correct. Okay. Because the sheet, the only problem is with this is the reason you use these is because the, the sheet rock can actually crush when you want to tighten that up That's against it. it. Now, could you also cut it out? No. No? no, couldn't. But you you could, but that's gonna you'd want to. It'd be a tough finished edge and all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. To go around the bracket. Got this, it. This way it works a whole lot better because the painters can caulk around the edge and paint this up just Got like it. a piece of trim work. So we're gonna come in five inches off the side because that's what DJ wants, and then we're gonna come from there and lay it out with no less than thirty inches in between. And probably the easiest thing to do with this is just put your five inch mark or wherever you want the mark and just draw you a level line. Using a nail gun for this, it's a finished nail gun. You can use hand nails if you want to. This is just much easier. I would have used it on the other, but I forgot my other gun. So lining up here, flush with the top. You don't have to worry about nailing it up too much, but you don't want to put the nails in the way the bracket's going to go. So the bracket's going to go here, your nails are set or, or close together. You don't want to put nails back where you're going to be drilling the holes for the bracket, for the screws to go for the bracket. Are those nails, how, how, how big were those nails? They those go, are two and a half inch nails. Oh, they come back in here. Eight penny nail, yeah. That's all the way through this, through the sheetrock and all the way into the, okay. into the block. So once again, flush with the top. Now we're going to take the bracket. The bracket's going to center up over the block, flush with the top again. Yeah, let's put that board on to make sure. Is that the right one? Yeah. Marking your pilot holes. Uh, make sure the bracket is the same. It's a two inch, this is a two inch flange. You got a three and a half inch board. 
So you're going to want to go. What would that be? Three quarter. Three quarters on each side. Line up on those marks. You're flush this way. Then you can set your pilot holes. Okay. All right. We've got three quarters of an inch board. We got half inch sheetrock. Then we got the inch and a half blocking back behind it. So it really doesn't matter how far the bit goes in because you're not going to come all the way through. So we're just going to come here and pre-drill these holes. All righty. Now. With this bracket like this, we used inch and a half bolts before, because that's because we had a, a, a inch and a half product. This is a quarter inch that kept the bolts from being a, coming in through a quarter inch through the backside. Here we've got three quarters, half inch of sheetrock, and then the inch and a half behind it. So the in, inch and a half nails aren't long enough, or inch and a half lags aren't long enough. We need to move up to a two inch lag. That way you've got it's going to go through this board to sheetrock and into the uh, the solid blocking back behind it, which will give it plenty of support. Say you got a product that's thicker. Say you're using an inch and a half block back here and the half inch sheetrock and whatever. Then you'd want to get into a two and a half inch screw or a three inch screw. You just want to make sure that this whatever length screw is, that it's biting at least one inch into the blocking. Something too that we're doing is using a long extension bit to keep the drill away from the gusset, from scratching the gusset. This gives you the ability to be able to tighten it. Yeah, I'll cut this out. This gives you the ability to be able to tighten it and to stay off of the, the gusset so you don't scratch the gusset. Once again, just snug is plenty. If you go to over tighten it more than snug, you're going to strip the screw out. You want to get all the bolts in before you tighten it. That way you can adjust it. Now that you got the bottom one in, we're at a three-quarter mark all the way around, brackets level, then you can tighten. About 10 pounds of pressure, I don't know. Just just enough you can feel it when it's snug and it's not That's gonna tight. go it's tight and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now we're gonna we're just gonna repeat that on the all the the next four brackets that we're going to put in. And uh, we got them all mounted up and now the the crew from Terry's Tile and Stone is coming in. Now once again the top's been set in place. We would have done it this, the same way again. We would have put caulk underneath the bracket on top of the, the metal piece of the bracket. Put a big bead of caulk on each one they would have set the granite down on top of it. That would help it here. Then you would do the same thing like we talked on the other brackets. You would put a bead of caulk around this edge right here, all the way around. Letting it set up for 24 hours and dry, and it's not going to go anywhere. You set it up all around the, the wall and everything. Yep. You want you would want to caulk back here. You'd want to caulk here and back in the back section back there. What that gives you, what that does is if somebody came in bumps against the granite it keeps the granite from being able to shift it's that's really the only reason you caulk it you don't caulk it for any support because the bracket takes care of all that you got no problem with that piece of granite wanting to move so your kids can hang on it the kids can hang on not it. supposed to but yeah we wouldn't wouldn't recommend it's better it. it's better than those 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 wood brackets that those core bells that don't don't hold anything right right they're, they're more for looks than they are for anything. And in an application like this, if you don't have a strong bracket down here, the granite could very easily want to tip on you. Being in the in, in like that, the bracket could, could want to you wouldn't You wouldn't want tip. that tipping off on you at a party, right? Uh, if that fell on you, I think that'd ruin you. Spill, you spill all your yeah. drinks and it might land on your foot. Right, and then I think the party would be over after that. The party that. would be over. It's nothing like broken bones to end a party. Uh, next, what? we're going to show you an application where if you, you don't have the ability to take the sheetrock off or if the sheetrock's not off and the sheetrock's in place, we're going to show you how to do the same thing with a different piece of wood giving you the ability to put the brackets wherever you wanted to again. All right, and that's it. We, uh, I want to thank uh, again uh, Triple Penske and Lewis and & Sons and Terry and all of his crew at uh, Terry's Tile and & Stone in Charlotte, North Carolina.
This is our uh, installation of the of the Oxford on a on a block backed uh, uh, wall or bar wall. Bar wall. The next one we're going to go to is to show one that's not block backed. So, thanks a lot for watching. www.federalbrace.com. That's it. Thank you.